In this lesson, we'll solve cosecant theta equals square root two and cosecant theta equals negative two on the interval from zero to two pi without using a calculator. Since we won't be using a calculator, we'll be using the unit circle and reference triangles to solve our equations. So for our first equation, cosecant theta equals square root two, I'm going to rewrite this as cosecant theta equals square root two over one. And now, because cosecant theta and sine theta are reciprocals of one another, if we wanted to, instead of solving this equation, we could solve the equation sine theta equals the reciprocal of square root two over one, which would be one over square root two. This is helpful because remember on the unit circle, sine theta equals y. For the next step, let's determine where cosecant theta and sine theta are positive. Notice how they'd be positive when y is positive because r is always positive. And y is positive in the first quadrant where both coordinates are positive and in the second quadrant when x is negative and y is positive. Now there's one more thing we want to do before we go to the unit circle. Here we have sine theta equals one divided by square root two. Let's express this value in a different way by rationalizing the denominator. So if we have one divided by square root two, and we rationalize this by multiplying by the square root of two over the square root of two. This would be square root two divided by two. So it's important to recognize that these two values are the same. Square root two divided by two is the same as one divided by square root two. And now again, to solve cosecant theta equals square root two, we'll solve this equation instead sine theta equals one divided by square root two or square root two divided by two. So looking at the unit circle, we're looking for a y coordinate of square root two divided by two since sine theta equals y. So notice how we have a y coordinate of square root two divided by two here as well as here, which means sine pi over four and sine three pi over four equals square root two divided by two, which also tells us that cosecant pi over four and cosecant three pi over four equals square root two, which are the two solutions over the given interval. Let's solve this again using reference triangles. Whenever we have a trig function value involving a one, two, square root two or square root three, this should remind us of our reference triangles. So using our reference triangles, we'll find an angle where cosecant theta equals square root two over one, one for one or two, where sine theta equals one divided by square root two. Here are the reference triangles. If we focus on the angle which measures pi over four radians or 45 degrees. Notice cosecant pi over four radians is equal to the ratio of the hypotenuse to the opposite side which is square root two over one or square root two, and also sine pi over four equals the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse, one divided by square root two. Which means if we sketch a reference angle of pi over four radians in the first and second quadrants, we can also find our solutions. So we'll sketch our reference angle here in the first quadrant, pi over four or 45 degrees, as well as in the second quadrant. And now we'll sketch our reference triangles and label the sides. We'll label the legs one and the hypotenuse square root two. But in the second quadrant, x is negative, so this would be negative one. But notice in both cases, the cosecant of our angles would be square root two over one or just square root two. So one solution would be this angle here in the first quadrant, pi over four radians, and our second solution is this angle here, which would be pi radians, or pi over one, minus the reference angle of pi over four radians. So this would be four pi over four minus one pi over four, or three pi over four. Notice our two solutions are the same solutions we found using the unit circle. Let's take a look at our second example. Here we have cosecant theta equals negative two. So if cosecant theta 
equals negative two or negative two over one, then we also know that sine theta is equal to the reciprocal function value of negative one half. And notice that cosecant theta and sine theta are negative when y is negative, which means the angles on this interval with these trig function values must terminate in the third quadrant and the fourth quadrant. In the third quadrant, both coordinates are negative, and in the fourth quadrant, x is positive and y is negative. So now using the unit circle, we'll look for a y coordinate of negative one half in the third and fourth quadrants, which would also be the angles where cosecant theta equals negative two. So looking in just the third and fourth quadrants, again we're looking for a y coordinate of negative one half, which we see here and here, and therefore sine seven pi over six and sine eleven pi over six equals negative one half, which means the cosecant function value would be the reciprocal of negative two. So our two solutions are seven pi over six and eleven pi over six. Now let's solve this again using reference triangles. To do this, we'll find the reference angle that gives us a sine function value of positive one-half or a cosecant function value of two, and then we'll sketch that angle in the third and fourth quadrants, which will make the function values negative. So again, we're looking for an angle that has a sine function value of one-half and a cosecant function value of two. So notice if we focus on pi over six radians are three degrees, the sine of pi over six equals opposite over hypotenuse or one half, but therefore the cosecant of pi over six is equal to the ratio of the hypotenuse to the opposite side, which would be two over one or two. But again, because we're looking for negative trig function values, that means we'll have to sketch a reference angle of pi over six radians in the third and fourth quadrants. So we'll sketch a reference angle here of pi over six or thirty degrees as well as here. And now we'll sketch our reference triangles and label the sides. Short leg one, hypotenuse two, long leg square root three. But here we're in the third quadrant where both x and y are negative. So we have a negative here and a negative here. In the fourth quadrant, y is negative, so this is negative one. Notice in both cases, using these reference triangles, the cosecant function value would be negative two, and the sine function value would be negative one half. So our two solutions would be one here, which would be pi radians, plus the reference angle of pi over six. So pi is equal to six pi over six plus one pi over six. So there's seven pi over six radians, which we already found. And our second solution would be this angle here. To find this angle in radians, we would take two pi radians, one full revolution, and subtract pi over six radians. So two pi or two pi over one minus pi over six, common denominator of six. Notice how we have 12 pi over six minus one pi over six, which is 11 pi over six. So I think it's important that we're able to find our solutions both with a unit circle as well as reference triangles. I hope you found this helpful.